So this is the uh, final panel for the day. We're going to do half an hour and then we're going to close at five. And um, we love having old devs on there, but we've got some new devs here and they're making some awesome, awesome games. We're not, we're not that new, we're quite, we're quite old. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you're young compared to a lot of the old Amigans. <laughs> but, but you're also using new tools and you're using new techniques and you're creating new games and new ideas. Uh, a lot of them are uh, pretty different to what was traditionally on the Amiga. And I'd love you to tell us what your game is and kind of what your latest production's been and why you are actually creating games for the Amiga nowadays. Uh, oh, whoop, there we go. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't touch the tip. Um, uh, so I got into uh, making games because uh, I was primarily a, a demo scener for, um, for years when I was a kid and then got back into it in 2010. Um, so I was like doing music and demos and, and doing stuff like that. And then the, uh, the, uh, the old pandemic hit. Um, and of course, uh, I couldn't go to any demo parties to, you know, enter any competitions or anything like that. Um, so in terms of like a creative output, I had nothing left. So, or, 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 you know, there wasn't, there wasn't that thing to do anymore. So, um, I kind of fell into it by accident by finding Metal Gear source code from the MSX online and thought, oh, what happens if I convert the graphics for that? Oh, there we go. We've, we've got that on the Amiga now. And then it kind of snowballs uh, until you end up having a full game at the end of it. So that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's how I got into it. Uh, latest game is um, a port of something on the PC and Switch at the moment called uh, Seekanoid, which is a, it's a retro-inspired twin-stick shooter um, by uh, Gareth Noyce. There he is, I think. <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> um, he's here this weekend, so yeah, he uh, he made that in Unity, and um, I spent like about a year and a half uh, porting that to uh, Amiga, so it works on a 500, and that should be coming out in a physical box in about a month or two, thereabouts. So yeah. Uh, I was just wondering as well about like licensing and stuff. Do you think um, the Dreamcast scene has a lot of titles that? Uh, released officially and kind of come out as, as like licensed ports they're kind of packaged and stuff is that something that you want to do with some titles at some point or is is metal gear licensed uh, uh, well metal gear was not licensed at all uh completely illegal activity uh, uh <laughs> ste <laughs> stealing someone's ip and then um uh putting it on another machine uh, i did it twice it was fun but you know uh i obviously didn't charge for it so you yeah. know yeah. uh but um uh, licensing, yeah, I think that's that's the thing. Like I myself, I I got into it through that avenue of like porting some other game, uh, so it works on the Amiga. But within that, you you learn the mechanics of how a game fits together. How you know what? How does this work? How does that work? Um, and so yeah, I'm still like I. The last thing I've just finished is another port, but um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of getting to the point now where I want to make like my own game. So I've got some some plans for that, but. I don't want to say anything yet, so cool. Thank you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I was checking this was working. Um, yeah, so it was making games that actually got me into computers in the first place in the 80s when I was still too old. Um, I've sort of I've always made the money at bits, and, and back in the day, and they may have started making some, but never actually managed to finish any of those ones back then. Um, then around, I guess, 2020, I'd finished up making uh, a quick game for the PC. And I was looking for something else to do. And I thought I remembered about one of the games that I hadn't finished on the Amiga in 1993. And thought, well, much like Hoffman there, um, what happens if I try to assemble this? And what tools are around at the time to do that? And so one year later, um, oh, Turbo hold it a bit closer. A bit closer. Okay, sorry. And then one year later, uh, Turbo Tomato came out um, in a big box, which was quite a lot of work and quite. Um, it was good because I uh, started the game in 1993 and then finally released it in 2021. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, some unfinished business there. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So the the latest one I'm working on is, as Robbie says, sort of a. A new genre for Amiga, really, a twin-stick shooter. It's a modern 
modern genre that just really takes advantage of controllers that the Amiga didn't have back in the day, but uh, we have some options now. I mean, the Abstraction Games guys at the, sitting right at the front here, hello, uh, have made a little prototype twin stick controller which gives you two analog sticks and eight buttons on one DB9 port. And so that's enabled something like Rogue Declan, which is also on the floor here. Um, it, it sort of it makes that more playable than if you have one or a traditional joystick, or even two traditional joysticks. Um, so that is not quite finished, but it will be released before the end of July. Um, you can play that on the floor. Have a go on the floor and tell me what you think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Hello. Um, yeah, I started off, I uh, had like 10 years as a, a game programmer. I made an MO, MO called uh, Dogfall, which was released back in 2009. And then by that time, I was really sick of making games. So I just quit and uh, started as an IT consultant instead, because there was more money and uh, less overtime, which was a good thing for me that time, right then, because my health wasn't too bad. It was too good after like 10 years of uh, seven days a week, 12 hours uh, working. Um, but then uh, back in 2019, I was, I was work, doing a lot of uh, like shit work, basically, boring stuff. And uh, I started thinking back to my back, like, good old days when I was doing like Amiga stuff and demo stuff. And thought, why not just try and see if I can make something simple. So I got into Commodore 64 games, I made Showdown. Uh, I think that came out in 2021, I think. Or 2020, and then uh, after that, I started. Um, I was there was this 4K game jam, which I went into, and I thought, okay, I'll try to make something that's cool 4K. Uh, obviously, not a lot of graphics and stuff, and I started uh, to see if I could do something procedural. So I made a roguelike called Rogue 4K, which uh, was about 4K, and about 2K of that 4K was just generating the levels. Uh, but people seemed to like the, the way the game worked, even though it was really, like, graphics-wise, pretty poor. So I thought, what would happen if I tried to make, a, like, a proper Commodore 64 game? Uh, so I just expanded or made an evolution of Rogue 4K into Rogue 64. And uh, what I'm working on now is Rogue Craft, which is an Amiga version of the uh, 64 game, trying to use what I, you, the stuff you have in an Amiga, like the extra memory, extra graphics and do it, make it a little bit of a better game than Rogue 64 was, even though Rogue 64 was received pretty good though. Yeah. I was um, uh, wondering as well with Niverig, you said that you used a, a kind of game that you'd previously developed. Yeah. Um, have any new tools helped you kind of speed up development where maybe it would have been a bit slower in the older days? Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the tools that are available now are just so much better than anything that existed back in the day. Um, modern Amiga game development you do entirely on your PC or Mac, and you know you have a, a much better editor. It, the emulator boots in a couple of seconds, and you have like debug tools. You have frame profilers, step debuggers, just tools that just didn't exist outside of professional studios, and even then, uh, and you, just, you can download download all of these for free now, and it just it makes things so much so much so much easier. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And uh, uh, Zander, do you um, think that that kind of limitation in size is and that challenge is something that drives you, and uh, uh, do you kind of get like thrilled making a smaller smaller sized game? Yeah, I think uh, having the, like the limitations uh, helps the creativity, and uh, also doing game because I can't do this full time, right? I have to have a proper job. So doing this on in the evenings, I have to have a little bit of a lesser scope than would have if I had a, like as a full job. So uh, having the limitations also makes it easier for me to actually complete something and not just keep on you know working on something. So that's, yeah, I think that's a good thing. And I think uh, a lot of the like styles change with games uh, from what it used to be. Like uh, I, I know you you have a black and white title out yeah. there and stuff. Um, I, I remember when a lot of old traditional Spectrum games would get ported to the Amiga and they would be like full color. And it, you've kind of gone in the opposite direction. Um, 
why did you do that choice? Uh, well, this, uh, the original uh, PC version is basically is that aesthetic. So the uh, uh, Gareth made it so it's basically just black, white, and red. So it feeds in. You know, you see a lot of uh, like indie games that you get these days. Like you, I think some what's it called? Minute. That's another one where it's like it's just all black and white, but it's just leading into that retro aesthetic. But um, it kind of, you know, it 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 has a benefit when you come to the Amiga because you don't have to draw quite so much. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's uh, but that's you know, I, I like the fact that we can. We're in a, a, a time now where like it doesn't have to be. Uh, 16, 32 colours, everything on screen. It can be whatever you want to be like. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I like about it. Yeah, there was a, a time with the Amiga stuff and, like, accelerators when they started coming out where everybody tried to do 3D games and they tried to kind of push to that and get better textures and stuff. And now it seems to be more focused on style and uh, do it, doing something a bit different. Um, you've done a game, Turbo Tomato, Nivri, that's... Uh, quite fun aimed at kids and also it's got a theme of tomatoes which seems to be on loads of Amiga games <laughs> why, why do you think Amiga loves tomatoes <laughs> <laughs> what a question um, I have no idea why Amigans love tomatoes I couldn't think of three maybe but um, no I mean the turbo tomato design and our choices were driven by my brother it was a it was actually a comic strip he was drawn when he was in school when we started when we started making the game and so that's where all the characters came from. <laughs> and then we made up stupid names and things for them. Just the whole game was just, you know, it's just a bit, it's a lot of fun. It's not specifically aimed at kids, but kids do love it. <laughs> and uh, Zender, um, doing procedural generated stuff uh, must add a whole extra element to the coding. And uh, uh, does that kind of add more demand, or is it actually uh, less of an impact on resources? Uh, it makes uh, the thing in the procedural generation. I, I kind of cheat a little bit. I'm not going to tell like, exactly how I cheat, but I do some cheating. <laughs> so <laughs> I do procedurally generate the, the levels. But then again, we've already handmade the rooms, right? So when I procedurally generate the levels and put the rooms in, then I find which room fits with the actual design of the level. If it had one or two or three exits and stuff, so we have a load of hand-drawn levels. So that kind of uh, eases the, the load on the procedural generation, because if it was fully procedural generated, I'd have to have a lot of extra stuff in just to make sure that it doesn't mess up the gameplay. Um, just I'll take the mic because Rogue Declan is fully procedurally generated. Levels, rooms, everything. And he's right, yeah, it adds a chunk to the code and you can, there's a noticeable delay before the level loads, but uh, in terms of lessening the other work, yeah, you don't need to design levels. You don't need to, you know, make a lot, make a lot of graphics because the, the the cleverness, the effort is in the code that actually sticks it all together. So it does it for you. <laughs> and uh, w w why do you think that the kind of A five hundred and uh, the lower spec Amigas have become the target of uh, lots of games coming out recently, and also? Lots of stuff in the demo scene as well. We've seen quite a few demos that are now targeting them less than the powerful Amigas. I mean, that, that answer's quite simple. If you do anything on a faster Amiga, you usually get shot down, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you get, uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people dislike it if you target a game at uh, an 030 or an AGA or something like that. Um, but, I mean, targeting the base machines. It limits the scope as well because, as Ricky said, we're not we're, nobody's doing this for a living, and yeah. you know there's a lot more game can fit into an eight meg A1200 with an 060, <laughs> you know, uh, compared to an A500. Um, it just it limits the scope and actually like, lets you actually finish things. Yeah, for my part, it's basically that I had an A500 with an extra memory expansion. So one meg expansion, so that I want to have to work on my old machine. So I don't really care if anyone complains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's also kind of fun to just try to fit games into the limited spec as well. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. It's it's always really nice as well to see something in like a big box release and 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 see it packaged as well. And uh, is that something I know Turbo Tomato? You you have a really nice kind of package. Is that something you're hoping to do with? other titles or 
any of you, any of you guys were also hoping to pump out stuff and do you think a standardized box shape will ever <laughs> ever happen <laughs> Uh, we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think Rogue Declan feels more like a, a small box release, like a hit squad or kicks release, to be honest. <laughs> so budget. I, I, yeah, a budget release, yeah. I, I'm t- maybe start try to start a new thing there, small budget release boxes or something. Put, put them in the old cassette case. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. with the old cases, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, collect, there, there's definitely collectors who appreciate new games coming out in big boxes mm-hmm. and I guess they would also appreciate standardised boxes but you know, there's, there's so many publishers it's not going to happen <laughs> oh yeah we're going to be making a Rowcroft on, in a big box we're um, talking to Pick Math Soft at the moment mm-hmm. so they're going to probably release it as a big big box release that's the plan I remember seeing like game collections of Amiga games, and it would just be—you'd <laughs> have to put them in like uh, ascending order like that. Um, yeah, I, I was just wondering what you feel about the game engines as well that have come out, like uh, stuff like the Scorpion engine. How has that um, helped speed up development? Um, well, it's, it's that thing, isn't it? Like the the Amiga was a, a gateway for artists and musicians, right? Like that machine had a, a mouse. <laughs> And, and, you know, anyone could pick up. They didn't need to know how a computer worked, right? They could just pick up Deluxe Paint and start painting. They could pick up a tracker and start writing music. It's the same with these uh, Scorpion engines and uh, these other engines. Like, you know, you could make a game. Yeah, there is, a, like, a performance hit with that, but that doesn't stop you from just picking it up and having a go and seeing if you can make a game, right? Which is, you know, which is it's a fantastic thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's been so many new games that... that exist now because of things like Scorpion and Red Pill that just wouldn't have existed because the people that made them aren't really coders and that's no disrespect but you know they as often said you can pick it up and you can start making it without really knowing the depths of the hardware or the or you know assembly language or anything like that it's, it just makes it easier to know yeah it makes it more available to everybody yeah I think it's a good thing and I think it's nice that it's, the, it's easier to make uh, new games on the Amiga. And uh, I mean, games wise for Amiga at this point, uh, the more the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think with a, a lot of kind of uh, Amigas getting connected online that we're going to see more kind of multi like functionality having online scoreboards and stuff? But also, will we ever see like matchmaking and kind of a standard that you know, uh, and maybe a Steam for Amiga? <laughs> Nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's quite it's quite di- difficult to do that from within the game, unfortunately. Um, I think Metro Siege, I think, has a lot of online play coming out. Um, it's in development. It has, but it I think it runs into modes where you have the normal hardware banging, everything shut down um, game, and then they have one that runs. On with the operating system still around, so you can actually use the TCP stack and do the online play and everything. I don't know what they're going to do for server side on that though. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen with my games. So <laughs> they're not very OS compatible at the moment. So as long as I'm targeting OCS anyway, uh, it probably won't happen for my games at least. Well, uh, which games are you kind of looking forward to, and, and which ones do you enjoy as well? Other other titles that you haven't created. Uh, crikey. Um, uh, I'll, I'll go out on a limb. I'll say Tower of Babel in terms of uh, old school games. That's well, someone else who's actually played it. My oh. goodness, there we go. Uh, it's, it's like it's like a big track, but with uh, spiders. Yeah. yeah, fantastic game. I actually did. I actually did did one of the for Tower of Babel. So, so, so I know. It. <laughs> but yeah, it's a good, it's a great game. Um, I think. Yeah, I'm going to probably break with tradition as well. Um, my favourite Amiga game is probably Alien Breed 3D, the first one. I just I got really into that when it came out and I just loved it. And I know it's like a 3D FPS game that's not traditional Amiga, but yeah, that's that's one I like the best. Uh, Checkernoid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if we had any uh, questions from the audience. Uh, put your hand up. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, I forgot your name. Sorry. Uh, Ian. Hoffman. Ian. Okay. So 
you were working also on a twin stick shooter game. Yeah. And you're not using our dual stick controller. No. <laughs> what, what's, what's going on? Yep. So why are you using the dual stick controller? Uh, well, yeah. So in Seekanoid, we've got lots of options for. Uh, so, so it's a really good question actually, because uh, on the Amiga, twin stick is not really a common thing, right? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the way I approached it was to add as many options as you can, right? So in terms of moving, you can use a joystick, you can use the keyboard or whatever. And there's options for mouse shoot and and the rest of it, and you can like select which ones you want to use, where and when. Um, the reason why I haven't uh, uh, plugged in this particular twin stick uh, controller is that no one sent me one yet. So, <laughs> oh, there we go. So there we go. Yeah, we'll get that sorted out then. <laughs> got any more uh, questions? Have we got any online? Yeah. Oh, we got one there. Yeah. You talked about PC development tool chains. Just out of interest. What tools do you use out of choice? Did you try several different things and settle on something, or did you just pick something and run with it? Uh, what what PC development tools do you use? Um, I'll yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I tried a couple of them. Uh, Turbo Tomato is, was written on assembly, so there's a VS Code assembly plugin you can get. Uh, it understands 60K, and it, it's, it's just very fast to use. Um, Rogue Declan is written in C, and that's another new tool that you can have now. The C compilers have got so much better from the 90s that they're actually producing you know, code that's fast enough to use in games. It's not quite 100% hand-rolled hand hand assembly, but uh, it's not far off. Uh, so there's, a, there's two tool chains there, um, Bebo and Bartman, they go by. Um, I prefer the Bebo compiler, it's slightly faster. Bartman compiler comes with a lot more tools, so a lot more debug tools, and that's hosted again in VS Code. So, yeah, there's plenty out there, and they're all free. Yeah. And uh, are, are you working on anything special that you could uh, tell us about, or, or maybe hint at? <laughs> like nothing special at all. <laughs> Hoffman's lips are sealed. Very much so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot say. <laughs> I, th I think, have we got any more questions? Oh, oh. one here. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, I've played all four of the games mentioned today and they're all really great. So, uh, you may already have plans for this kind of thing, but going the other way, if a publisher came to you with a lot of interest to say, hey, I want to see this ported to other platforms in the Amiga, how do you feel about that? Would you go down that avenue? Well, would you port other games? Uh, well, would you port to other platforms? Uh, yeah, I think well, I think the the solution there is uh, to find a super easy way to do that, right? Yeah. Like that there, there isn't at the moment. There's not an out of the box solution. You kind of like you could probably cheat it and just say, let's wrap an Amiga emulator with you know a Steam wrapper. Bam, you're done, right? Um, so the question is, is how do you do that? Um, I haven't seen many. Have you seen any that have actually done it that way yet? No. No. Uh, not yet. I'm not yet. <laughs> I can't talk about that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, let's uh, keep that quiet. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> the same uh, you know, uh, yeah, happy to port to other platforms, not a not problem. Um, the only issue is technical ones. There's licensing issues around using the Amiga emulators, wrapping them in Steam, things like that. And, uh, that's sort of or a bit of a blocker there. Um, but you can... You, to, to port to PC or something, you need to write kind of half an emulator yourself, um, which is a lot of work, but it's not impossible. Yeah, so you want to be careful with ROMs. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah I'd so port to other platforms. I'm actually rewriting, or started writing Rowcraft for Unity at the moment for a platform, but yeah, we'll see what happens there. And uh, also, some of these games also can be emulated on coming on other platforms like mobile platforms and stuff. Uh, just get them out there. That's uh, possible to do as well. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Another question. No. Well, in extension to this question, we actually ported um, the Case Engine to Steam. Okay. By not emulating it, so we, we simulated it and we added more code like twin stick. Ah. But then. Uh, Steam Steam. Add, adding uh, simulations to Steam. Yeah, sorry, I, I'm repeating stuff. It sounds really weird, but uh, <laughs> it's so other people could hear it. <laughs> no, um, I, I think it's really interesting. I, 
I think how's the kind of world of digital in distribution helped with uh, a game, but also like collaborating online and, and developing? Do you mainly work on your own guys or do you work with other people? And, you know, what kind of tools do you use online to do that? Uh, just the usuals like GitHub or, you know, file sharing or whatever. Um, I don't tend to uh, collab that often. I do quite a lot in the demo scene with other people, but um, in terms of games so far, I, ha I mean, apart from uh, Tony Galvez, who's done a lot of graphics for me on, on various projects, but um, yeah, I, I, I like to keep a, a tight lip on everything when I can. So. <laughs> Um, Ian keeps himself to himself because he can do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the graphics. Apart from the graphics. Uh, um, yeah, no, yeah. We definitely work usually in small teams, maybe a couple of people, you know, one person coding, one doing graphics, one maybe doing sound. Um, the collaboration is, is just generally over Discord or email or something like that. Uh, there's no real specific tools for that. Um, there's a great um, I make a game dev Discord where you can kind of throw up tunes or graphics or you know work in progress stuff and uh, get help with it or just like what he thinks. And so that that's that's a good resource. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I always work with Hanning, who does the graphics for the Badger Punch games. He's over there, yeah. <laughs> and uh, also we've been working with uh, Sami Luko, whose uh, handle is uh, Proton. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's mainly what we've been working with, and uh, file sharing is mainly the tool because we don't. I don't collaborate on code. I do all the coding myself. So then uh, I do the code, and then I get the files from uh, the graphics files and the music, and put them together in the game. That's about it. Any any more questions? Uh, uh, so thanks for the games. It's great. <laughs> we know you don't make a fortune out of these, and probably don't even pay for your time, but. They still crop up in the piracy scene, so your work is, you know, out there. People are robbing it off you. How do you feel? Well, what what, what do you feel about piracy of modern Amiga titles? Uh, those in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, do do do, do we all want to just have a quick look in everyone's uh, uh, disc boxes from the nineties? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, there's, you know, you can't really argue with that, can you? I mean. It's, I don't think, you know, I don't think in this day and age it really harms your sales, really, because the people that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a growing community of people that want to support people that are doing stuff, right? Um, there is an emotional cost to it when you see it on release day, right? That's, you know, that's, that's not good. It's like you could just leave it for a, a couple of days at least, but, you know, it's, uh, it's how you deal with that, really, so. Yeah, um... Everyone had a, a big box of pirate Amiga games, um, <laughs> and I was just going to echo what um, Ian said there. It, it's in terms of sales, it's probably people were probably never going to buy the game anyway, and a lot of the a lot of the things that get pirated just go into giant collections of four thousand games that you, nobody ever plays anyway. So big deal. Um, and then if you see the game. You see your game on release day, and it's you know cracked by somebody or other, and you, you know there's no protection on it, so it's just seriously, lads. <laughs> you know, it's, there's no. I, I I don't know why they do. It. I don't know what kudos they get from it, but uh, whatever. Um, yeah, it's it's just the way it is. It doesn't. I don't get too bent out of shape about it. Yeah, I'm not very fond of the cracking scene, especially when they like release your game on the same day it goes out. I haven't actually released a game on Amiga yet, but I mean, at least my game on uh, Commodore 64, and it was. I think uh, Rogue 64 was cracked before it was actually released, but uh, luckily they cracked a better version, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I get to tell, tell them off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's so low effort as well, because they do, all you do is stick a fucking intro on the front of an actual game, and. Uh, for uh, Rogue 64, they had a little bit more work because they, they can't release cartridge games on the Commodore 64. They have to release them as disc files, so they have to do some work. And I put some uh, shit in there to make it harder for them. So uh, they actually, I think the actual final game wasn't properly cracked because they couldn't do it. So I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> I was, was going to say, like, in terms of like, you know, protect, uh, trying to add protection to a game this day is, is, you know, it's like DRM on video games, right? It's... The, the most likely outcome is that you're going to alienate people that actually want to buy it, right? So, um, 
Uh, I mean, but if you did, there's probably not that many people that would want to touch it this day and age anyway, or don't have the skill to. So, um, yeah, that's not a challenge because <laughs> I'm not bothering. So, Yeah, I, I, I kind of don't see the point of Amiga Zero days, but, you know, <laughs> <that's>, uh, <laughs> however some people get their kicks, you know. Like, um, well, I'm going to say this is the end of this panel and uh, we're going to be closing at five and it's, it's quite hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> and uh, it's a nice su sunny evening. So if you all like go and have a drink, go to your hotel, check in and stuff like that. And if you come into the after party, it's going to be at uh, 7.30 that is really going to kick off. We're going to open doors at 7. Um, if you've also not got a ticket, then please hang around the area because there's loads of good pubs around there. There's loads of outdoor seating places and we'll put on social media if there is space. There's an area to sit out outside, but we don't want to kind of overwhelm the staff straight away and overwhelm the bar because then no one will get a drink. So uh, we've got six hours tonight as well. So we'll be going to midnight. Uh, there's a huge range of acts and, you know, I don't think everybody's going to stay for hardcore chip baselines <laughs> after after 10 p.m so it's, it's gonna have two vibes so there's gonna be a uh, lots of kind of mixers we've got um hoffman's playing tonight we've got john Hare's gonna be doing some stuff earlier on we've got paulie alex bow uh harley likes music who is a game boy uh one of the best chip musicians i've seen actually live and he's come over and i, I just thought it's not amiga but it's absolutely amazing and uh, the venue's got some really nice beer. It's got some uh, vegan junk food as well called Mocky D's, which is meant to kind of replicate McDonald's. Um, uh, it's it's going to be good, but also the beer's quite strong, guys. So um, uh, take it a bit easy. Drink halves if you can. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for our devs, and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow, tonight. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>